everyone. Today I'd like to take a look at making high definition GIFs and we're going to be doing it with After Effects and Photoshop. Now before we get started we have to go over one important factor and that's our source quality footage. If we're using a 360p video from YouTube that's not really high quality material. You want to at least go 720p, 1080p or even 4k. For all my videos I like to use 720p Blu-ray RIP MKV files. Now I'll link in my description another video where I show how to get that MP4 extracted out. So let's go ahead and get started. In addition to some editing techniques, I'd like to go over a few shortcut keys that'll help you guys move a little bit quicker and efficiently in After Effects. First one begins here in the project panel where I can double left click to get my import file window. I'm going to choose my MP4 file and import. Now most Blu-ray rips are 23.976 frames per second and this should normally work 100% but I like to come in here and go to interpret footage main and switch this to 24 just to make sure that all my keyframes are going to match up in After Effects with the keyframes from the video. Now I'm going to click and drag this down to the new composition button. This will make us a brand new comp. If we look at the settings, you'll see that the width, height, frame rate, all the settings will match the source video, which is great. We we'll basically get that for free. Now, as I scrub through the video here, you can see adaptive resolution kicking in. It's pretty choppy. It's hard to work and get to the area that we want. So I'm going to start trimming this down to a usable work area. And I'm going to do that by finding the beginning section of what I want. For this video, I actually want the part where James Bond introduces himself, which I know is roughly in this area. And let's go get the end point. So we're using B and N, which is going to set the in and out points of the work area. So now you can see it's a smaller work area. I can right click in here, say trim comp to work area. Now we just turn that two hour footage into about three minutes. So let's keep getting a little bit shorter and shorter here. So I know the scene where they walk around and meet each other so it's about right here and then the scene ends closer this way so I'm basically going to keep chopping this down until it's small enough to the area that I can easily work with so I know that he starts saying it about right here so let's scrub back a little bit and B get my intro there trim that and then I need to get the last part of the video which is right before the camera switch which is right there now I can scrub back and forth and try to find that exact frame which is really a pain instead I'm going to use page up and page down page down will take you the next frame page up will take you the previous frame so I can keep going right there till I get to the change I go back one frame hit N trim comp to work area so now we've got our nice four seconds of footage of him introducing himself now if we for some reason would like to see the appropriate time codes over here I can come to composition settings and just zero out the start time code that way if I look at the time over here it'll, it'll make a bit more sense to me so we've got our clip trimmed down and it's ready for editing so I'm gonna right click say new text and it is the names bond James Bond. Okay, got our text input. Now, as far as fonts go, it'd be a good idea if you can find a nice font that'll match what the style is of the video. It kind of just gives it this nice, more polished look to it. I like to try to find a font used for that movie. Uh, there's plenty of free, uh, free fonts out there. You can often find ones that were exactly used in movies. If not, some standard ones that work pretty well is Franklin Gothic impact is also very good uh, one I just got the other day Garmon Classico is a very nice one Bank Gothic is a good elegant one for this example we're gonna use Franklin Gothic very easy to read font so obviously we need to center this text so we've got a few options here under align I can do my horizontal alignments so I'm gonna align it in the middle and I've also got my vertical alignment so I'm going to throw it at the bottom and then I'm just going to up arrow a couple of times I also like to make sure that that text layer under paragraph is set to center justified and this just helps for when it starts being extended when you add additional text it keeps that anchor point right in the middle 
also got a few other options you can play with some of the text you can kind of stretch it out if you want you can space the uh, change the amount of space between the characters you can even set all caps you can set small caps italicize you could play with a whole bunch of stuff over here just to tailor it more to the footage that you're editing so in this case I'm gonna go with let's go with about 85 font size it's about a good height from the bottom now since I don't really care about these outline guides I can hold control shift H and hit that and that'll toggle this little guide UI element here. I just think it's easier to see what we're doing when we don't have that in our way. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's difficult to read some of these words around the white background area such as this collar. And that's why we're going to want to come up here, right click on the layer, go to layer styles and press stroke. By default it's going to show up red so I'm just going to twirl down the stroke attributes and switch it to black. Now for the size, we don't want to make this too big because it will become distracting. This is simply just a little extra style element to make it more readable. So in this case, I think I'm going to go with about a 5. I think that looks pretty good. And we can see the difference here between turning this on and off. It just increases the readability by tenfold. And I almost would say that it's necessary to have some sort of either stroke or drop shadow or something to allow the text to be read, uh, read much easier. If you don't, people aren't, aren't going to be able to read the text and they're not going to like the GIF and then you'll be sad. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing we need to take a look at is of course trimming this down because we don't want the text to just be permanently displayed on the screen. We kind of want to have it show up as he's saying it. So let's go to the beginning where he starts to say the word the about right there. And this will also lead us into the next section of shortcuts which involve the bracket keys. So left bracket is going to move this layer. All right, these are all layer manipulation keys. So I, you can see here if I move this, the size of this layer is the full comp. See on the right and then on the left. So as I keep clicking the left bracket, it's going to keep moving this. Now I can click the right bracket, and it's going to set the end spot for it. The width is still the same, it's still very large, but this is going to set where it starts and ends. Alternatively, if I hold Alt and press the bracket, it's actually going to trim to that spot. So I can keep trimming this on either side, the beginning or the end. So if I want it to be from about here, I can even do the opposite of trim, which is to extend it, and I can go out here and do the same thing. And So these are some nice manipulation keys just to kind of help you move around with your frames, especially if you use this in conjunction with the page up keys. You can get right to that frame you want and set the endpoint. Now where this really becomes useful is with other layers. For example, if I bring in a solid layer, all right, he's the full size of the comp right now. If I click on my text layer here, uh, two more shortcut keys are the in and out points by pressing I for in or O for out. So I'm going to hit I, take me to the beginning of this layer, click up my black solid, hold alt, left bracket. It's going to go ahead and trim him down to the exact start of this layer. Go back to the text layer, O for out, back to the black solid, alt right bracket. We just made the one layer equal to the size of the other layer. And this is very useful if you have a large amount of footage that you're editing and you're kind of, you know, you're not really zoomed in as much. It's hard to do this the scrubbing by using these little keyboard shortcuts you can easily move around. Okay. Uh, the one other thing we should look at too is the RAM preview. Um, in this case I'm dealing with 24 frames per second. Now with RAM preview you have two options. You either have the normal one or you have the from current time. Now when using the from current time what that's going to do is where you put your cursor and you hit numpad 0 it's going to render out to the end of the uh, area and play that back. The difference is that if I use the space bar to play back which is what you normally would use if it hasn't rendered that section yet, it's going to have to render it as it plays. And sometimes it'll be choppy, you'll have to wait for it to finish and then come back and play it again. By using the RAM preview, it's going to render out the whole section. Once it's done, it will rewind back and play that section again. Now if I uncheck this from current time, it's going to render everything in the work area. So if I make my work area tiny, and then I RAM preview, it's just going to render out this section and then just play that on the loop. So those are two little nice 
things that you can work with. Sometimes it's easier to do a RAM preview, get a section rendered out, and then have it play back instead of using the spacebar. So back over to the text layer here. This looks good and all, where it shows up as he's talking. It's actually here. James Bond. James Bond. And he stops talking about here. But this is a good opportunity to have each word show up individually to make it look like he's actually talking to us. It just gives it more of a better style. Let's take a look at that. Expand our text layer. Next to text, we've got this animate property. We've got a few options here. We can do position, scale, skew, rotation. We want opacity. So we're going to default the opacity to 0%. Open up range selector here. And if we play with this start time, we can kind of see what's going on here. It's going to reveal a percentage of this layer based on what we have under start. Now this is great and all, but the first thing you'll probably notice is how do I how do I get it to stop right where I want it to in between the letters? Sometimes that can be a pain. We can easily solve that by bringing down advanced, going from based on characters to based on words. So now you can see it's going to reveal the words one at a time. This is great and all, but of course another issue is that we get this fading here because we're still using percentages. Well, lo and behold, we have percentage units will now go index units. And you'll see it has a five, and that's because we have five words. So if I put a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, you can see each word corresponds with a full integer under the range selector. So this becomes a bit easier to work with. Let's go ahead and start on one, go to the beginning of our layer, keyframe that. We're also going to hit U, which is just going to show keyframed attributes, made this a little more cleaned up. Now before we set our next keyframe, we have to understand the fact that this is a standard keyframe, which means wherever I put my next one, it's going to interpolate between the two. So if you watch here, you can see the value changing from one to two, and you're going to get this kind of fade, which we don't want. What we do want is a right click, toggle hold keyframe, then when we set our new keyframe, we'll get this square instead of the little diamond. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold the keyframe until we hit that frame, and it's just going to pop the word up right as he says it, which is perfect. So using this, let's go ahead and find where he says the next few words. So we've got the about right here, names, and you watch his lips, Bond, about right there. Names Bond. Then we go to the end. And he says James, approximately there and bond. And there we go. And then we'll play back the whole thing. I gotta say that looks pretty good. Timings look about right. I've got all our keyframes set. Like we said before, we have a couple other options under the animate. You can do the scale, you can do the skew, rotation. You can throw a couple of those in there. You can use your imagination. That's what it's all about. All right, this is looking really good. We're going to go ahead now and export this. So with our composition selected, we're going to hold Control Shift and hit forward slash. And we click on lossless. This is going to define the type of output under format. We want to say PNG sequence. We're going to resize this. Since this is about four seconds long, I know I can get away with close to 700 width. Hit OK on that. Then we're going to come over here to Output 2, set to our Frames folder. I'm just going to use R for Render, and let it render. So it's going to go through, output of all of our frames. While that's going on, let's go over here and hop over to Photoshop. Now, normally, you can use the File menu and do your imports. I like to do Control-O, choose our first frame, Image Sequence, Open. 24 frames is what we originally had in our composition, so we want to match that in Photoshop. And there we go, we've got our single layer Photoshop animation. From here, we're going to do Control Shift Alt S. It's going to give us the Save for Web dialog. Thanks to editing and layout, we've got these great settings over here Adaptive Diffusion, Transparency with no transparency dither, 256 colors, 100% dither no web snap and zero lossy and we are not going to change any of these options the only one we're going to change would be the dimensions and the looping options now if you do video frames to layers import this will default to forever however in image sequences case you're gonna to have to choose forever 
Now my target is 10 megabytes for this particular GIF and I'm only at 9.1 so I've got a little bit of wiggle room and I like to make these as large as possible. So I'm just going to slowly start increasing the size of this project until I get as close as I can to about and under 10 megabytes. Of course if you're shooting for 5 megabytes, whatever you're shooting for, this right here is where you're going to be looking. So might take a couple chances here and we'll go 9.961, looks pretty close. Now with Photoshop doing the resize on the image sequence, I've noticed that you can have some artifacting, especially with the text show up. What I like to do, take that width, 730, go back to After Effects, right click on my render queue object, duplicate with name, resize, and I'm going to put in 730 and hit OK. If we're going to re-render out, it's going to ask us to overwrite our previous render, that's alright, let that go. It's going to re-render all those frames out. We're going to come back in here. We're going to cancel this out. Control W is going to close the active project. Render finishes. We're going to hit Control O. Choose our first frame. Image sequence open 24 frames per second. Control Shift Alt S. We're back to where we were before. 9.8. That looks pretty good. That's pretty close to 10. We'll go with that. Choose forever and save. We're going to save this to the desktop. Okay, let's close this down and say open him up. And there we go. Looks pretty good. I don't really see any type of artifact in the background. We've got the text, we've got the stroke on it. This is a pretty good looking GIF. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something here today. 